starts right now. Good morning and a happy Monday, the day after the Super Bowl. And for a lot of us, people bet. Yeah, Maybe not here in Texas, bet. but people across the hey, world, Max, they bet. how much did you bet? How much did you lose, Max? I didn't bet as much <laughs> as Mattress Mac. He threw down, Sarah, take it away. How much did he throw down? He threw down $3.46 million, and he bet right because he was betting on the Bucks to take the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And he ended up winning $2.75 million off of that bet. Not a bad deal. So some of you may be asking, how did Mattress Mac, a Texas guy, bet? Well, fun fact, he flew into Colorado Springs on Wednesday, logged on to the DraftKings mobile betting app from the airport, and placed one of the largest bets ever on the Super Bowl. So he had to pay a little bit extra using the app. He took the Bucks at plus three and a half. That means that they could lose by three points, and he would still make his money. But they didn't lose by three points. What happened, Sarah? Well, I don't know what happened. <laughs> the Bucks won. The Bucks won by a lot. I didn't. I, I didn't know what. Yeah, I just know it was a blowout game. Max, I didn't watch the end of the game. I just know the Bucks won, and the yep. weekend did a great job in the halftime performance. So, Mattress Mac said it's the happiest thing for me that so many customers were thrilled watching the game with their families. They're getting a free mattress, and they made the right choice buying from us during the promotion. So he bets, and it's also tied in with his furniture store and promotions with customers. He's. He's known for doing these bets and making them big and tying them in with promotions from his store. I mean, hey, if you got $3.46 million, hey. might as well. Might as well. All right, let's take a look at today's 9 and 9. For the first time since November 2nd, the country is reporting fewer than 100,000 daily cases and a 50% drop in infections since the peak on January 8th. But variants of the virus are threatening progress. House Democratic leaders are expected to unveil legislation today that provides millions of U.S. families with as much as $3,600 per child as part of President Joe Biden's COVID-19 relief package. If this legislation is passed by Congress, monthly installments could begin in July for one year. Local health officials reported 739 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. Three more people have died because of the virus. Fewer than 1,000 people are in our local hospitals. Former President Donald Trump's impeachment trial is set to begin this week. The Senate is set to launch the impeachment trial tomorrow to consider the charge. That Trump's words to protesters at a Capitol rally, as well as claims about a stolen and rigged presidential election, provoked a mob to storm the Capitol. The Biden administration is planning to rejoin the United Nations Human Rights Council. Reports say Secretary of State Antony Blinken and another senior U.S. diplomat will make the announcement later today. Search and rescue operations are underway in the Himalayas after more than three dozen people became trapped in a tunnel when part of a glacier broke off and sent a wall of water and debris rushing down a mountain. At least 15 people have been rescued and more than 150 are missing. The death toll has risen to 14. Oil prices are up 50% since the end of October. Also sent gasoline prices across America up from an average of $2.12 a gallon to $2.46. There is a push to make porch piracy a felony. Arkansas lawmakers will take up a bill this week to upgrade package theft from a misdemeanor. They say increasing the penalty makes the crime easier to investigate and hopes the higher penalty will be a deterrent. 3D printing technology now includes homes. The first ever 3D printed house is now for sale in New York. Construction costs were about 50% less than traditionally built homes. The three bedroom, two bath house with a garage is asking prices about $300,000. And that's today's nine at nine. A lot of questions about that one. One, if it's 50% cheaper to make the home, shouldn't it be 50% cheaper to sell the home? I don't know. Okay. I just, they make them out of concrete. Like I've watched oh. the video where they pour this machine pours a, I don't know. It's cool. It's fascinating. You should look it up. I will. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 57 degrees, sunny Sunday for the Super Bowl. Justin, are we going to see the sun today? I think we will a little bit later this afternoon. It'll take some time though to get rid of these clouds and there is some fog out there right now. We're dealing with some visibility issues around the area. Visibility is down mainly around New Braunfels and Rock Springs. Those are the two spots where we're seeing the fog this morning. Not a big deal here in San Antonio. It's just it's just cloudy. 
Uh, let's look at the visibility. Again, quarter of a mile there in New Braunfels. Randolph, so the east side of San Antonio, yeah, we are seeing a little bit of fog down to about half a mile there. And uh, again, seeing some fog out near Rock Springs. Temperature wise, we're in the mid 50s right now, 56 at the airport, 58 Holotus, 56 Tarpley, 55 in Bandera. And as you look at the pollen count, Mountain Cedar is moderate. It's down a little bit from where it was yesterday. We've got mold and ash in there too. And the forecast for today, uh, we should take it up to about 74 degrees. Again, a little bit of sun this afternoon. Southeast Chile winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. A couple warm days here in the forecast. And then potentially some cold weather, some rain too. There is a lot happening in the seven-day forecast. We'll get to that coming up in just a bit, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Top stories we are following today. One person in the hospital this morning, another detained after a two vehicle crash on I-10. Police tell us it happened on the eastbound lanes near North Foster Road around 215 this morning. Police say a driver rear ended another vehicle on the main lanes of I-10, sending the vehicle off the highway and through a fence near a landfill. Police on the scene telling us the driver taken to a nearby hospital luckily only had minor injuries. They are expected to recover. In the meantime, Police detained the other driver who they believe caused the crash. Right now, they're facing charges of suspicion of a DWI. Well, police are also investigating another crash that happened on the city's south side. One person was taken into custody after police say he crashed into trees. So it'll happen around 1.15 this morning on I-37 South, uh, south near Southton Road. Now, officers tell us the driver claimed to be avoiding another vehicle before crashing into the embankment of trees. Police say the driver was taken into custody under the suspicion of DWI. There were no injuries reported. Now to the latest on the pandemic. More COVID-19 vaccines are coming to Bear County this week. 10,000 Moderna vaccines will head to Metro Health. 10,725 of the Pfizer vaccine will go to University Health System. And 5,850 of the Pfizer vaccine will head to WellMed. As of now, the state of Texas is still in phase 1A and 1B of distribution. For more information on the incoming doses, just head to ksat.com. And your morning headlines. The mayor of Tampa Bay laid down the law over the weekend. A lot of folks just happen to ignore it. And a TikTok video helps deliver a package. Mm. David Sears is here with this morning's headlines. Good morning, David. Are you happy this morning? My ha I'm always happy. <laughs> oh, but no, you that's right. Your team lost, right? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm, Sarah's I, I, just I, I happy that she predicted the box and now cheering. everyone else is just throwing <laughs> right under the bus. I'm not even a huge Bucks fan. I'm just poking fun at people. You should have bet that $3 million. I know. Well, if I had it, if I had the money to bet. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later on this morning. But first, let's get to this. This is what a lot of medical experts feared. Not a Bucks win, but fans celebrating that win on the streets in the bars of Tampa Bay. The mayor of Tampa, Jane Castor, signed an executive order requiring people to wear masks at Super Bowl parties, even outdoors. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers beat Kansas City 31-9 in the Super Bowl after the win. Fans hit the streets of Tampa, and as you can see, not a lot of social distancing and not a lot of masks. Some stores inside a bar in Tampa after the game was over. The celebrating began once again. Not a lot of distancing. I don't. We have some video of inside the bar. We showed the inside the bar man stuff, didn't we? All right. Not how long the contact lasted. We'll know in a few days if COVID-19 was the real winner this weekend. All right, let's take it to Tennessee for a YouTube prank video that went deadly wrong. It all happened in the parking lot of a trampoline park in Nashville. Timothy Wilkes and another man were trying to pull off a prank robbery that they were filming for YouTube. They ran at a group of people with a butcher knife. A person in that group pulled out a gun, shot and killed Wilkes. So far, no charges have been filed against the shooter. YouTube usually cracks down on videos that promote anything illegal or harmful, and investigation continues. Justin and our weather team have been talking about that cold blast way up north. There's some pictures of what it looks like. A dam in Wisconsin icing over. The temperature in Green Bay with the wind chill at minus 23. The storm hitting all over the north, causing all kinds of havoc. There's a car that's flipped over. This is in Charlottesville, Virginia. Then rescue crews had to dig a car out of a ditch down in the trees in New Jersey. The winter weather also causing deadly avalanches in Utah. One avalanche killed four skiers. Overall, 15 people have died in avalanches this year. Apparently, one of the problems, more skiers are headed to the back country to avoid COVID-19. And there aren't any avalanche protection measures in place in a lot of the backcountry. And finally this morning, a package from Walmart shows up on the doorsteps of Scott Trujillo in Fresno, California. No big deal until he figured out it wasn't his. 
the package was ripped, something leaked. But regardless, Trujillo wanted to find the right person who owned that package. So he made a TikTok video featuring the package. He asked if anyone knew the person that the package was meant for. Her name is Rosalind of Fresno, California. He started getting comments on the video. He then one of them caught his attention. It turns out it was Rosalind's niece who lives in New Mexico. Rosalind finally saw the video. She only lives about 10 minutes away from Scott. The two connected. She got her package. It was all good. But then the burning question, what's in the box? It was food for the, you know, Armageddon or whatever. It's virus. It was in my <laughs> so I had the spaghetti sauce that was broken, and that's why it was, you know, wet and moldy and I ate the box. Yeah, yuck. Rosalind did get her money back from Walmart. So the spaghetti jar broke in the box and you got some nastiness. You know, he did go out of his way and hey. took to social media. They figured it out. That's dedication. I bet you it was stinky. Mm, thank you for that. So, David, <laughs> the burning question on everyone else's mind, are you on TikTok? Mm, what? No. <laughs> you know what, David? It's okay. Max isn't on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. I, no. I'm Justin not. Horn, though, Justin Horn, big advocate. On TikTok. Mm -hmm. So it's what? Twitter. <laughs> Thanks, All right. Thank you, Dave. We're going to be checking in with the Super Bowl and Spurs, right? Yeah, yeah, in a minute. All right. <laughs> Time now is 9.09, 57 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a look at which movies top the box office this weekend. That's coming up. And what we just alluded to from the Spurs. It's a big game. A lot happened this weekend. David, RJ, they're coming back. We're going to be talking about a lot. And this Airbnb will take you back to the 90s, how you can score reservations at the Saved by the Bell Airbnb in Dallas. That's next in What's Up KSAT. That is awesome. Let's take a live look out at the markets. Dow up 190. Good day for a Monday. Marvelous Monday. If anything does go crazy, we'll let you know. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Monday. We're gonna take you to a time machine, make you feel like a 90s kid all over again. Unique Texas Airbnb. All the feels, and the pinata of pain. I don't know, I don't, what is that? <laughs> Shows up in <laughs> South Texas, that sounds awful. RJ Marquez is live with us with that mm -hmm. story and more of what's trending on KSAT.com. I hope pinata of pain, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's actually not as bad as it, as sounds, it sounds, but sounds uh, no, that's definitely uh, making me have some uh, terrible, uh, it's terrible thinking about when my uh, childhood birthdays yes. and my family would totally mess with me <laughs> and do that kind of stuff. But um, all right, first of all, let's start with something, uh, something very interesting here. Let's start by taking a stroll through San Antonio's history mm. with a look at some vintage pics from the Japanese tea garden. Very cool. We have several vintage photos on our site this morning that tell the story of the tea gardens dating back to the early 1900s when the city parks commissioner at the time designed plans to build an Asian style garden at Bracken Ridge Park. The tea garden was originally part of the Alamo cement quarry before the quarry stopped operations in 1908. The city parks commissioner used prison labor at the time to create the gardens and they were originally called the lily pond at first. And uh, also a lot of people that go there always talk about the sign, the entrance sign. That is a replicate of a Japanese Tory gate, which was designed by renowned Mexican artist Dionisio Rodriguez. So uh, some very cool vintage photos there. People always enjoy the uh, a look back at these on our website. You could check this story out right now on ksat.com. Uh, have you guys been out to the tea garden? I used to live right across the oh, street from nice. it. Loved it. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's great for the gram. Yeah, absolutely. Great for the gram. I like it. Yeah. TikTok? No. 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 All right, we were having RJ. Do you yeah, have TikTok? We're no, no, I'm not on TikTok. All right, just, one of us need to get on TikTok eventually. Did you yeah, just call RJ old? I said all of us are old because uh -oh. we know what this blast from the past is. Yeah, this is interesting here. So break out your fanny packs, <laughs> acid wash jeans, and hair scrunchies because there's a Saved by the Bell themed Airbnb in Dallas that will transport you back to the 90s. So this thing is called the Slater House. It's named after the show character AC Slater, who was played by Mario Lopez. And and it can be rented on Airbnb right now. It can accommodate up to five guests and is still available for reservations this month. All right, so this home includes retro video games, VHS movies, because who doesn't love that, and breakfast at the Max, which was the hangout for the group. Um, would you guys do this? I saw <laughs> I they know. had Power Ranger VHSs. 
Yes. Awesome. They had a Titanic as well. Oh my so, gosh, that room yeah. looks like my brother's growing up. Oh, oh. we got the N64, <laughs> yes. 007. It's over. Yeah. I'm in. All right. So I think we're all sold on this one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. A lot okay. Of nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good stuff there. Okay. So also in KSAT.com, here we go. Here's something that some people thought was straight out of a 90s it horror is, movie. <gasps> the Texas Wildlife <gasps> Parks, <laughs> Parks and Wildlife Department posted an image on Facebook asking people what this weird bag looking thing was. Some of the responses were from the monster from Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> and another said it is the pinata of pain. Yeah, it turns out it's actually a large nest of Mexican honey wasps, which are native to Texas. So these wasps are the only honey-producing wasp species in the nation. So they are very important to our ecosystem. Don't go messing with the piñata of pain here. Uh, they're very important because of their pollination services. The wasps are not aggressive when left alone and, and undisturbed. Officials say you should follow the old adage, look, but don't touch. So this nest was actually found southeast of Bear County. That's terrifying. It is. <laughs> Yeah. I like how you had to tell us, look, but don't touch. Now, I'm not going anywhere near that. Yeah, yeah no, I could imagine if someone just kind of strolling through the area and they come across this thing. Yeah, that is, uh, that's you pretty You have to scary. say it like, piñata, pain. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> pain. Feel the pain. <laughs> okay, so time now for the days of the week. This is Justin's favorite segment of the entire week. <laughs> Today is it. National Football Hangover Day. See, Fingers. we said it should be a holiday. It yes, should be a real right. thing. <laughs> it's also National Boy Scouts Day. Uh, tomorrow oh. is National Pizza Day. Wednesday is National Umbrella Day, which honors one of the world's most useful inventions. I did not write that. The umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday is National Inventors Day and Make a Friend Day. Okay. Yeah. Friday is National Plum Pudding Day. Which I found out many recipes don't even contain any plums. Still got a day for that. Saturday is Valentine's Day, which was started in 2010 by the Leslie Nope character in the show Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. And Sunday is, of course, Valentine's Day. All right. So our producer should not have told me, but we have a couple extra seconds to talk. Uh oh. RJ, what do you got planned for Valentine's Day? Oh, I can't say it. Oh, that's secret, Max. On the spot. Uh, wife may be watching. Oh, that's oh, well, a surprise. Oh, you know what? Our producer said we're actually over, so I'm getting oh. RJ off the hook. <laughs> okay. Sorry, RJ. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Let's toss this to Justin Horn. Justin, mm -hmm. umbrella. It's National Umbrella Day coming and up. Do Wednesday, we need it? Wednesday, we, we need it, right? Yes. He's stealing his thunder. Wednesday yeah. and Thursday. Oh, that's nicely played. There you uh, go. Yes, Wednesday <laughs> and Thursday. Those are our days for rain. At least we're hoping. It looks pretty good at this point. And we've also got some cold air to talk about, too. So let's jump in here. Fog, first of all, that's going to be our first topic of conversation because we do still have some fog out there. New Braunfels down to Randolph uh, there on the east side. So Eastern Bear County then up into Kamau County still dealing with some fog up and down I-35. We've also still got some fog out near Rock Springs. Those are the two spots. And then we'll see uh, the fog dissipate, I think, here within the next couple of hours. Clouds are going to hang around a little bit longer. We've got cloudy skies. Uh, right now, 56 degrees easterly winds at about three miles per hour. And you can see the uh, cloud deck here fairly thick. So it's going to take time for this to erode. It looks like it is thickest here over the hill country. But we're seeing some of that here in San Antonio with some high clouds over top of that. Uh, so a mostly cloudy start for sure. Temperature wise, 57 in Kerrville, 59 Hondo, 54 New Braunfels, 56 right now in Gonzales. And the dew point tracker shows we're going to have high dew points the next couple days. Then it just basically falls off as we get later into the week. That's our first cold front. And as you look down the line, uh, you'll probably notice that negative nine there on Sunday. We'll get to that. Looks like we're going to get some pretty cold air for the weekend. Forecast for today, though, 74 degrees this afternoon. Clouds will slowly break apart. And uh, again, I do think we'll get a little bit of sun this afternoon. Forecast shows that the clouds moving out. This is around six o'clock. Build back in tomorrow morning. I think we start off with fog and drizzle again on your Tuesday. And the clouds will hang around for a time tomorrow before burning off again. Tomorrow is going to be a very warm day. I think we can see some temperatures up near 80. By Wednesday, we've got some drizzle back in play. And by Wednesday into Thursday, some decent chances of rain as a frontal boundary moves south. Right now, we've got rain chances at about 60% on Thursday, which is great news. We need the rain. As we look at the big picture here, as far as temperatures are concerned, pretty interesting. 22 in Amarillo. They're starting to feel some of that Arctic air. We've been talking about it for what feels like a week now. It's trying to work its way south. So Amarillo is feeling it. You go north, the numbers are, are borderline ridiculous here. Negative 25 to International Falls, negative 19 in Bismarck. You factor in the winds, feels like it's negative 43 right now in International Falls. This is some bitterly cold air, and it is trying to push south. Of course, the big question then becomes, 
will it make it to South Texas? And that is uh, a million dollar question because uh, it is the, the models have been trying to bring it down in here and it just hasn't happened. I think that eventually it will make it down here. We'll get our first sort of taste of it. It looks like Wednesday and the Thursday as temperatures slip into the 50s. It'll be really cold across North Texas. And then as we get into Friday into Saturday, a couple models now indicating that we will get some colder air in here and even colder by Sunday. We'll see if that holds. The models have been kind of hinting at this for some time now. Uh, and we've just got to get some consistency there in the in the computer models. 74 degrees today, 78 Tuesday, 76 Wednesday. We'll put in a 30% chance of storms and, and showers. We could see a couple of rumbles of thunder. 60% chance of rain on Thursday with that frontal boundary. It'll be one of those days where we start off a little bit warmer and probably end up colder. 38 Friday morning. We'll go 50 right now on Friday in the weekend. As it stands right now, some rain chances on Saturday, and it looks like it could be pretty chilly for Valentine's Day. Temperatures potentially in the 30s. We'll keep you posted, guys. And Justin, I appreciate that. There's a lot of social media meteorologists that Sarah Spivey was talking about this weekend that are posting these crazy <laughs> forecasts for this weekend. So just listen, listen to our guys. They know what they're talking about. Good advice. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. All right, 922, 57 degrees out. All right, still ahead, the little things fell from 56% from its debut, but stayed on top. We'll take a look at what other movies did at the box office this weekend. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Monday. Big game weekend, traditionally a slow one at the movie theaters, even when there isn't a pandemic. But that didn't stop people from going to the movies this weekend. CNN's David Daniel has the estimates from this weekend's box office. Captain. Do you have any idea what those markers are? They look pretty ancient. Monster Hunter stayed in fifth place, earning $585,000. Wonder Woman 1984 fell to fourth place with $905,000, topping the 40 million mark in domestic ticket sales. The man you saw at the border is from the Vasquez cartel. He will find you when he does. He will kill you. The marksman moved up to third place, earning $1 million. Dad always says the pack stays together. That's my girl. The Crudes, a new age, opened on Thanksgiving weekend, and it's still going strong, staying in second with $1.8 million. Yeah, that one little feeling. But you waved it away. The Little Things fell 56% from its debut weekend total, but still led the weekend, taking in $2.1 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 927, 58 degrees out. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. The National Museum of African American Music is now open in Nashville. What visitors can experience at the new interactive exhibit, that's next in your good news. And Tim Bay Buccaneers making history last night. First NFL team to win a Super Bowl at its home stadium. Don't worry, I'm not going to be talking about it, but RJ and David will. They're going to have a recap and talking Spurs. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Monday, the Monday after the Super Bowl. The big game did not turn out as a lot of people like myself expected. Tom Brady, seventh Super Bowl win. Bucks beating the Chiefs by a lot. He's a goat. Well, David and RJ, they are back to break down this one and talk a little <laughs> about, about the Spurs as well. Um, David, I know David. You, <laughs> you were wanting your guy, Patrick Mahomes, to win. Let's, former Tech guy. Let's put it this way. The Tech game on Saturday, oh, the Spurs game wow. on Saturday, and golf yesterday turned out to be better than yeah, the Super Bowl. Wow. <laughs> How uh, about that? Yeah, no, one of the, uh, I saw on a sports website this morning said that the uh, drama between Brady and Tyron Matthew was more interesting than what? the entire game. <laughs> it was. Um, Let's let it, we'll start with the highlights and then we'll get into the yeah, complaints. Yeah. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, he can still fire that rock though, can Yeah, he, he can right there. Nice, uh, yeah. nice catch there. Mike Evans, Texas yeah. A&M alone yeah. uh, doing some work. Calm down, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, the guy had all day to throw. I mean, you know, if you can't find a receiver when you got that kind of time. Then... Uh, who do you find right there? Yeah, there you go. Wrong spike. There's, that's, 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 so there's, there's 14, and then there's uh, 21. another one. Yeah, yeah, this right was really, I guess, the, that, that the, the, the drive, that the series the that sort of turned the game yeah. here. Uh, definitely some questionable calls uh, uh, we'll going to that against in a Kansas City. 
my gosh. Uh, but but uh, right here, Tampa Bay takes a 21 to six lead into the half, and I think we're going to see here. There was a, a there was definitely some friction between uh, between Brady and Tyron Matthews. Yeah. Tyron, a little yeah. upset there. Huh. Yeah. Did did they? Yeah. Did they show it? No, we did not. Uh, <laughs> CBS didn't show a lot of it either, if you want to know the truth about it. And that's the, uh, yeah, that was, uh, the flag was on, guess who? Oh, boy. The Chiefs. <laughs> so, and this is, I guess this is his, yeah, look at, look at this poor play guy. of the game here. Running oh, for his amazing, life. Now, he's got yeah. a bum toe. Apparently, he's going to get surgery. On. Look at that throw. That was you got to catch that. I mean, the guy's falling in down, the, throwing from the side. How the do you face. not catch that? Boom. Hit got, him in the face. You got to like that. save um, him. That is Tyree, just an incredible Tyree throw. Kittle also had a big oh, drop in the man. first quarter, which, yeah. in which uh, Mahomes had scrambled around for a bit. But uh, Tom Brady gets it done here. Bucks win 31-9 again. Kind of a boring. Super Bowl here, but uh, Tampa Bay gets it done. Their second Super Bowl franchise history. Brady's seventh, fifth MVP. Yep. Uh, amazing, amazing. Says so he's soccer. coming back. Says so he's coming he back he's coming for more. Back. David, you seem very energetic, real <laughs> riled up this morning. What do you want to talk about the refs? Yeah. 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 Do you want to talk, do we want to hear from Brady first? Sure. Okay, let's hear from uh. Brady first. We want to hear from Brady? Huh. I think they're all special and they're all. Uh, it's been an amazing year, amazing year. We got off to a good start, 7-2, and two, and then had a little rough stretch where we kind of found our identity and um, played a lot better football down the last December, January. And um, just really proud of all the guys, proud of all the uh, coaches, the effort we put in. Um, we knew we were playing a great football team tonight, and we got the job done. All right, so here we go. Here we so, go. So Brady sets a record. He wins seven. There's no franchise. Yeah. yeah. Has seven. The, the most franchise is six, right? Mm -hmm. Brady it's has seven. Brady has more than any of the most franchises have. So here's two problems. Uh -oh. The referees also set a record yesterday. <laughs> so congratulations to the refs of the NFL Super Bowl. They throw nine flags in the first half, eight of them against the Bucks, Half those bogus. If you were watching the game, you would agree with me that half those flags are bogus. Some were legitimate calls. The other ones were mm -hmm. just bogus. Well, eight? You're going to flag a team eight? You're in the Super Bowl for crying out loud. You weren't flagging this stuff Ooh. in week four. And now you're going to yeah. flag them in the Super Bowl for this stuff. So they were letting the Bucks get away with all kinds of stuff all the way through the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, questionable calls here. I think that <laughs> even no matter what, though, I, I feel like Tampa Bay probably had the better team. We really underestimated the fact that the Chiefs O-line was just a mess. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was running for his entire life. They had two offensive yeah. linemen that were that yeah. were out. Yeah. That were injured. Still, so uh, they're starters. So. Great, it's but, not good when the refs are getting a lot of the headlines yeah. in the first half. That was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was just sad. And oh, by the way, here's something that nobody remembers, nobody talks about, nobody said anything. They had a rookie punter oh, who must God, have been so I didn't even, I didn't even know his the name. The guy shanked <laughs> two punts, and he dropped a snap. There was a penalty on that play, yeah. so they had to call that back. But, you know, like it wasn't a penalty. Ooh. It was always a penalty. But he, he shanked two punts, and that's the uh, – I believe it was the one right before the half. He shanked it, and they got the ball. The Bucks yes. got the ball tough inside night. like the tough 40, the down on the here. 38. Okay, so that's not any good either. Chiefs, so Chiefs I don't know. will be fine. Patrick Mahomes signed for a long time. So uh, Chiefs, I think they're going to be Maybe back. Maybe they need a punter. Eh, Brady will be back. Probably, yeah. Got to work on a lot of things. All right, Spurs, <laughs> David. <laughs> hey, this was a great game Saturday night. In addition, taking on the yes. Rockets. The Rockets were on a roll. Mm -hmm. They had won like six in a row. They were like mm -hmm. doing really well since they got rid of James Harden. But look at the Spurs. The Spurs yeah, coming uh, through on a road. DeJounte Murray, we talked about this earlier. Spurs got out to a nice start. Derek White gets his first start of the season yep really kind of made a big impact in the first quarter third quarter Spurs uh really came out and played pretty well almost gave this game away though late look at look at look at look at Drew Eubanks coming with the big slap and then at the end of the game though who AJ. took over and who got the win DeMar DeRozan yes he did his 30 point second mm -hmm. 30 point game in a row so so DeMar helps him down the stretch. He got the up fake, got the foul and the bucket. He, yeah, he can, he can fool DeMar, anybody too. with that thing. Uh, so DeMar they, should uh, be an all-star this year. I'm just yeah. saying it now. Uh, Spurs yeah. now play at home a couple of games here tonight, tomorrow night against Golden State. Ooh, and Steph had 57 the other night or something yeah. like that. Thoughts, that's predictions ridiculous. before we go? On, on what? Spurs better on tonight. Win. Oh, tonight. <laughs> they, they should win. On the next Super Bowl. You know better to ask me a prediction on the Spurs game. Come on. Win? 72 and 0. They're going to win. Yeah. They're going to win. Let's just hope they stay in fifth place. <laughs> they might move up.
<laughs> there you go. All right, David, RJ, thank you. I love the enthusiasm, David. Oh my David. gosh, so much salt. <laughs> so much salt. All right, 58 degrees outside. You can still see some of that fog, mm -hmm. Justin, that you've been talking about all morning. Still there. That's Monday, David, by the way. Wait till you get to Friday, David. This week could be intense. Hey, uh, yes, there is still some fog out there. We're going to see a little bit of that this morning. That'll go away, and then cloud cover will hang around for a while. We'll see that go away this afternoon, too. It's going to be a warm day, warm next couple of days. Let's take a look at the temperatures across the state. Big range here. Okay, we've got 70s down south around Brownsville. We're in the 50s here. You go up to Amarillo, it's 22. So that Arctic air is trying to move into North Texas, but that's where it stays today. It does not progress any farther south. You see the cloud cover here on the visible satellite picture. Temperatures right now close to 60 in a lot of spots. We're actually up to 60 in Holotus, 56 at the airport, 57 Tarpley. And again, there's some of that fog still hanging on around New Braunfels, down the quarter of a mile there. So be careful if you're traveling up by 35. We'll be close to 74 today. Again, we should see a little bit of afternoon sun, but then a lot going on in the forecast going forward. We do have rain chances. That's the best news of all, and we'll break that down for you coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, in your good news, the National Museum of African American Music is now open in Nashville's Musical Tourism District. The museum, which spans multiple genres of music, including gospel, blues, jazz, R&B, and hip-hop, tells the often overlooked story about the roots of American popular music. Visitors can view 1,600 artifacts and enjoy interactive exhibits that allow them to take the music home with them. And dozens of rescue puppies and kittens boarding a flight at an airfield in Fresno, California for a chance at a new life. A lot of the animals were rescued from high kill shelters and are now on their way to other parts of the state and other parts of the country where there is a short supply of adoptable animals. The flight was organized by the nonprofit group Pilots for Paws. Well, Snoopy, Woodstock, and the whole Peanuts gang are back in a new animated series. The Snoopy Show debuted this past Friday on Apple TV+. Plus. Each episode is put together from the almost 18,000 strips the late cartoonist Charles M. Schulz left behind. Schulz's widow, Jean, said the themes of friendship and understanding remain true to the original comics. All right, time now is 939, 58 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9, and a closer look at how a local teen is cleaning up San Antonio streets with one kick push at a time. The Carver Community Center is a cultural hub on the east side, from art to music and more, just like it originated in 1918. It served as a space for virtually all events in the African-American community. Two local men, John Grumbles and Charles Bellinger, pushed for it to be repurposed as the Colored Library Auditorium in 1913. In 1938, it was renamed to the Carver Branch Library in honor of George Washington Carver, the most prominent black scientist in the early 20th century. The space continued to bring in famous musicians and entertainers of the times like Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington, T-Bone Walker, Earl Hines, and more. But in 1937, the city wanted the building demolished. Community members stood in front of the bulldozer to keep it standing. The city then renovated it and opened it four years later as the space we have today. San Antonio teenager planning a major trip on four tiny wheels, and it is all a way to raise awareness about road litter. Daphne Gray shares his story and why he is using his passion for skateboarding to send a message. When I told her, um, she almost had a panic attack. That's a reasonable reaction any parent would have after learning their 16-year-old plans to travel over 800 miles across Texas on a skateboard. It's a long way, and especially the routes that, that are up there, uh, I believe some of the only routes that you can get up there are on highways. <laughs> so that's a scary thing. Ezra Reagan is an endurance skateboarder. When I started skating, I got really addicted to it, and I used to just ride for like eight or nine hours straight. And I, I have to say I would at least track 
20 miles in a day. Inspired by record-setting professional athletes, Ezra is determined to push himself this summer. Probably going to have to average about 100 miles a day to get it done as quickly as I can because I have school and stuff. But he's not just doing it for the fun. He's doing it to raise awareness for road cleanliness. Ezra plans to pick up trash along the way. On a skateboard, you start to realize how rough the roads are and everything, and um, especially when you start putting like trash and glass and everything on it, 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 it gets hard on cars, hard on your board, and that ends up going into just a big financial problem. <laughs> this upbeat, positive teenager overcame major obstacles in his life. I did grow up with a fairly dysfunctional family. My parents did get divorced, and that was a hard, definitely a hard thing to, to deal with. I got a relationship with my dad and a relationship with my mom, so that's great. Through those hardships, I kind of turned a lot to humor. And his love for skateboarding. <laughs> I become a, a completely different person when I, when I ride. Like, um, it's very euphoric. It's, it's, it's a big, big escape. As he plans for the big journey in May, Ezra says he will work on conditioning himself physically and mentally for the sake of helping our environment. That's what the skater kids will call gnarly on What's Up South Texas. Right now is the best time to be ambitious and just find your passion and go with it. Jaffany Gray, KSAT 12 News. That's what the kids are calling gnarly. Gnarly. That was really good. Did you skateboard as a kid? <laughs> no. Tell us about you. No. You weren't a kick pusher? No. No, what you were that a rollerblader. <laughs> what is a no. kick pusher? I don't even know what you that is. You were like the brink guy, like a rollerblader. Oh. <laughs> I didn't rollerblade it. <laughs> Too many people don't get the brink preference. Oh. I get it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thank you. All right, Justin, let's talk about the weather. We need uh, to yeah. this topic. Well, let's talk about extremes, guys, because we got some really cold stuff up north. We got some warm stuff down to the south, and that's creating some pretty significant extremes. Yesterday, it was 87 in Fort Lauderdale. That was the warmest place in the country. Then uh, this morning, we got down to negative 36 in International Falls. Incredible. So your extreme uh, temperature difference here, 123 degrees. We're going to see a lot of these over the next couple of days as this really cold air starts to come in from Canada. Outside right now, we've got uh, cloudy skies, and this is the time lapse. You can see the clouds have been pretty consistent here. Not a lot of fog in San Antonio, 56 at the airport. Dew point is at 52. East Chile winds at about 3 miles per hour. You can see the cloud cover here on our visible satellite picture. Quite extensive, especially north and west of San Antonio. So things are going to be cloudy here for a time. This morning, I think that probably lasts even into the afternoon before we get some of these clouds to burn off. It's going to be a mostly cloudy day. We've also been dealing with some fog in spots, and that's been mainly across New Braunfels, where it is still down to a quarter of a mile. Uh, looks like we should see some improvement, I think, within the ne next couple of hours, but that's the one spot that's still an issue. Temperature-wise, 59 in Hondo, 59 Curvo, 54 Rock Springs, 63 in Pleasanton, 60 in Gonzales, some of the warmer spots. Dew points are going to be high next couple days. It'll be humid. That's going to lead to some rain, I think, Wednesday and Thursday. That's some great news. Frontal battery comes through. We are going to see some drier air as we get uh, towards the end of the week into the weekend. And uh, you'll notice there Sunday it says negative nine. We're going to ignore that for now. The models have been kind of all over the place with this really, really cold air. We'll show you what we think is going to happen with that here in just a second. But first, 74 this afternoon. Again, maybe some sun as we get later into today. Forecast shows that. Clouds erode a little bit, but they build back in tomorrow morning. We start off with fog and drizzle and cloud cover again on your Tuesday. And then as we get into Tuesday afternoon, sky's clear. It's going to be a warm day tomorrow. We could see temperatures up near 80. By Wednesday, we start off with drizzle, quite a bit of it probably. And then by Wednesday into Thursday, we should see some decent chances for rain as our frontal boundary comes in. We get some upper level help here. So good to see rain in the forecast. I think we have a pretty good shot at it. Uh, looking at temperatures across the state, we showed you this earlier. It's 23 in Amarillo. Really cold. That's some of that really cold air trying to sink south. That's where it stays today. Doesn't make much of a push next few days. It is extremely cold as you go farther north. Negative 25 in International Falls, negative 19 in Bismarck, even Omaha. Negative 4 right now. Chicago is at 5. And you factor in the wind, it feels like negative 43 there in International Falls. That's the wind chill. So just some incredible numbers here. This is some of the coldest air we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, even in Amarillo, the wind chill right now is 15. So with that in mind, here's the sort of the timing here when it comes to the uh, cold air here in our neck of the woods. I think by Thursday we'll start to feel a little bit of it. We may get into the 50s. And then by the weekend, 
The models are hinting at some colder air really pushing in here Saturday and Sunday. The models again have been a little unreliable though, so just keep in mind things could change a little bit. Warm next few days, 30% chance of rain Wednesday, 60% chance of rain Thursday, and there you get the changes as we head into the weekend. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. With everyone at home these days, your bathroom may be getting more use. I have a new toilet unclogging tool for you today. No more ugly plunger, no more plumber visits. The Toilet Saver is the fastest, most hygienic way to unclog a toilet, and it's very easy to use. This heavy-duty J-shaped design rakes all the excess waste from the trapped area. It's light and easy to use, just 8.6 ounces, and it unclogs the toilet fast. It's as simple as rake, poke, flush. First, rake all the excess waste away from the waste trap to clear the way. Finish using the other side of the toilet saver to poke through the remaining clog to clear, flush, clean, and disinfect the tool. Now the retail price, $45. The case at deals price, $34.99. That's a 23% discount. Just head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more. All right, we're at uh, 58 degrees right now. We should be up around 74 this afternoon. We'll see some clearing, although cloudy at least through lunchtime. 78 degrees tomorrow, 76 Wednesday, and then some changes should arrive towards the end of the week. Uh, we're looking for some decent rain chances on Thursday, and we will get some colder weather, it appears, eventually, uh, down the line towards the weekend. Guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Before we go, one last story to tell you about, and it is not a happy story. Luby's lovers... Some sad news. Yeah. It looks like, like it or not, they're going to be closing all of the stores, expected to close all locations by August. Yep, that's what's happening. And the likelihood is remote that we will return from liquidation. So Luby's, which started in San Antonio in 1947, has been back and forth over the past year with rumors of closings and reopenings amid the coronavirus pandemic. But they have announced that for good, they will be closing in August. Guys, what is your favorite dish from Luby's? Mm. Justin, you start us off. I mean, the Luan platter is a go-to. <laughs> it's it's kind of the go-to, honestly. You know, look, no matter how you feel about the food, this place is an institution. It's, it's iconic. A, it's comforting. I remember back in the 90s and 80s in Corpus Christi, we had a Luby's Insider Mall, and it was a big deal to go. So oh, yeah. It's nostalgic. And yeah, were, the I remember chicken fried steak and the jalapeno cornbread. There you go. Good too. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. um, it was, was it Thanksgiving? I forget which holiday it was, but we were working here at KSAT, and they got lubies for us. Fantastic. All right, well, thank you so Quality. much for watching us. Justin, Sarah, always a pleasure. Have a great rest of your day. Y'all have a great day.